Wow, another video this quick, but yes, it's true. Once again, I have returned to deliver my amazing and indisputable commentary. And yes, once again, it is time for our subscriber of the day. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it is time to give recognition to one of your fellow wrestling fans. And the subscriber randomly chosen this time is... Legend Killer 687 ask and you shall receive you are our subscriber of the day okay everyone on the count of 3 let's all look into the camera and point at legend killer in appreciation and thanks ready 1 2 3 thank you one and all tune in next time to see who will be our next subscriber of the day okay on to the content of this video. For this video, I just wanted to give you guys some insight as to my background as a wrestling fan and more information as to where I come from, my point of view when I deliver my commentary, okay? As a brief, as a brief history, as I said on my MySpace page, I first became a wrestling fan around WrestleMania 4, WrestleMania 5. I watched those on tape. And by WrestleMania 6, I was a full-fledged wrestling fan. I was one of those people going nuts for Hogan versus Warrior. The first time I was ever really challenged as a WWF fan was around mid-1995. As I said before, I was just talking back then. Why is wrestling so horrible? You know, why is Mabel in the main event? Why are things total shit? Why can't things get back to the way they used to be? Okay, and in hindsight, the turnaround that came it was Nitro that came and saved the day. When Monday Nitro debuted in September of 95, that was the turning point. Because as I say over and over again, competition is what turns things around. And competition is what makes things better. And this is yet another example of that. And in 1997 and 2002, you couldn't find a bigger wrestling fan than me. I was the biggest wrestling fan you could ever imagine. Recorded every Raw, every SmackDown, archived them in chronological order. You know, at one point I was... Uh, a roommate with somebody and the TV was in the bedroom my friend was in the bedroom with his girlfriend and they were you know kinda you know getting it on you know no difference nine o'clock I came in the room hey yo time for Raw get out that's how big of a wrestling fan I was you couldn't miss an episode of Raw or Nitro you know because wrestling was must see TV because everything just came together that's what you seen seen lovers need to understand Everything came together back then, and it simply worked. And when things work, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So when you try to break things down into individual pieces, you're giving incomplete information and cheating the product as a whole. Okay? So basically, I don't understand the people who try to watch wrestling and break it down into analysis okay because when you watch wrestling you're not watching it in pieces you're watching it as a whole and when we watched wrestling when wrestling was must see tv when wrestling was the most exciting thing you could find all of us we didn't watch it in analysis when we watched wrestling back then it was something more like this come on here go no come on go go no no Oh, there we go. No, you stupid motherfucker! No, no, yeah! Yeah! Come on! Huh? Yeah! And that's how it was, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. You and like five or ten of your friends just absolutely going nuts. You're not thinking about how many reversals there were or anything like that. You are just taking the taking in the greatness that is happening in front of you right when the when things just work right when the gimmicks with proper character development and compelling storyline properly work together in synergy and converge into an incredible climax at a pay-per-view you are just consumed and overwhelmed by the experience it is just like amazing and I haven't felt that and I'm sure many of you haven't felt that from wrestling in such a long long time and that's why I don't understand these wrestling analysts that love to break down matches you know and give them stars in isolation how can you do that with all the intangibles and tangibles that work together to make a wrestling product how can you just focus on the match to determine product quality how can you do that you know like 
I don't understand these wrestling analysts. They don't see things the same way we do, you know? When they watch a wrestling pay-per-view, I don't think they watch it the same way we do. When they watch it, my guess is it's more something like this. Number six. Ooh. Very exciting match. Very exciting. That's no way to watch a wrestling show. I mean, technically, they paid the 40 bucks. They can watch it however they want. But my point is, is that when they do that, they're no longer seeing things the same way we are anymore. They're no longer sharing our perception of things because now they have an ulterior motive. When they're watching, they're thinking about the articles they're going to write, the videos they're going to make, the shoots they're going to do, and that distorts their perspective. All right? Basically, they're no longer thinking as a wrestling fan. They're thinking as an analyst. And I, in, my, in my opinion, this is bad for two reasons. One... Because in my opinion, I feel they're cheating themselves out of the enjoyment of the show. And two, by doing this, by watching with a secondary motive, they are distorting their perception to, now, to no longer be in line with the common wrestling fan. Basically, they're seeing things from a different point of view, all right? They're not seeing things as fans. They're seeing things as analysts, all right? And I'm not saying this is necessarily bad. I'm not saying that you should stop listening to them. All I'm saying is that you should be aware. These guys have a lot of knowledge and a lot to offer, but when you listen to them, when you listen to their reviews, treat them the same way you would treat a movie review from a professional movie critic. Understand that their perception is a bit different from ours, all right? And I don't ever plan on being like that, okay? I don't ever plan on cheating myself out of the pure enjoyment of the show. I'm never going to have a notepad while I'm watching. I'm never even going to make mental notes while I'm watching a big wrestling pay-per-view because I feel that there's an innocence in the pure enjoyment of the product that needs to be protected, all right? And I truly feel that there's no point in breaking down things into a billion pieces because there are so many pieces to begin with before you even break it down. So the best way to look at things is to look at things as a whole, how they work synergistically and compare them to other products of different time eras or of different promotions. I think that's the best way to approach things. But back to the timeline, you know, 2002 was when my fandom started faltering and ironically when I started faltering as a wrestling fan because I started not liking the product as much that's exactly the time when I started meeting people from the wrestling industry you know like uh, there were I, I started meeting a lot of like indie wrestlers you know a lot of wrestlers a lot of wrestlers I know like formerly worked for TNA because you know in 2002 when TNA was first starting, they just had like a jumble of wrestlers, you know, just coming in and out for one, two time appearances, you know, and a lot of those wrestlers, you know, are like from my area, they, they work out at my local gym, you know, so I, I started meeting people, you know, started going to indie local shows and stuff like that, you know, and that's where my, you know, contacts come from, that's where my insight into more like the internal aspect of the wrestling industry comes from, which I do not like to focus on. I like prefer to focus from the fans' point of view because I feel that is more important. So basically, in summary, I, I hope this lets you know a little bit more about myself. And basically what I'm saying is, based on my education, my contacts, and my lifelong wrestling fandom, I think I'm in good position to deliver these types of videos that I deliver. I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone else. I'm just giving you, hopefully, more insight as to where I come from and the nature of what my contributions here will be.